all the tugboats were gathered at the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company dock for the morning meeting. All the tugs, except Emily, that is. Emily's late again, said George. I'm sure she'll be here soon, said Theodore. We can wait a few minutes, said the dispatcher. No one was worried since Emily was sometimes a bit late for morning meetings. She likes to watch the sunrise from the entrance to the harbor, said Hank. And she talks to the ocean gulls about the weather, added Fodog. Now George knew Emily wasn't always on time for the meeting, but he had stayed up too late the night before visiting with his friend Owen the oil rig. And now he was tired. And being tired always made George grumpy, so today he was in a bad mood. Emily is late too often, George declared in a loud voice. And when Emily's late, the meeting is late. And when the meeting is late, the ships in the harbor have to wait. But she's a bad example for the other tugboats, he continued. And it's against the rules. Well, the others were very surprised by George's outburst. No one knew what to say. Huh, good, snorted George, breaking the silence. Then we all agree that something must be done about Emily's lateness. Do you wish to make an official complaint, George? Asked the dispatcher. Suddenly, it seemed the entire harbor became still and silent. An official complaint could mean getting a red mark in the great tugboat book. Everyone held their breath and looked at George. George felt like he was floating on the edge of a waterfall. But he couldn't stop from moving on. Yes, declared George in his biggest George voice. I'll make an official complaint. Well, at that moment, Emily arrived. Sorry I'm late, she said. I was watching the sunrise, and then I started to talk with the gulls, and I just lost track of the time. That's okay, said Theodore. No problem, said Fodok. You're not that late, said Hank. George said nothing. Emily, said the dispatcher in a stern voice, an official complaint has been made about your lateness. Well, Emily was shocked. I have no choice but to report you, continued the dispatcher. But that means I'll have a red mark in the great tugboat book, said Emily. Never before had there been a red mark placed by the name of Emily the Vigorous. By now, George was trying to hide behind Foduck. And who has made this official complaint? asked Emily. Hank and Theodore couldn't help but look over at George. George moved forward. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I did, he said, sounding a little less sure of himself than before. Emily stared at George, but said nothing. And even as the dispatcher gave up the jobs for the day, she continued to glare at George. Emily and George, said the dispatcher. Please help bring a container ship into Dock 11. Theodore, go along to help. That is all. I uh, guess we should get started, said Theodore quietly. Theodore, please tell George that I am not speaking to him anymore. Theodore didn't know what to say. Hmm, snorted George. Theodore, said George, please tell Emily that I am not speaking to her anymore. Well, at first, Theodore thought that Emily and George were being so silly that he wanted to laugh. But then he felt puzzled. Well, they couldn't mean it. Could they? Now, Emily, George, and Theodore had worked together many times, bringing the great container ships into the harbor, and the tugs were usually very good at their work. But not today. Hmph, <laughs> said Emily. Theodore, said George, please tell Emily to watch where she is going. But before Theodore could speak, Emily jumped in. Theodore, she said. Theodore rushed to Emily. Please tell George, the official complainer,
that he is supposed to button on the front. Theodore, said George. And on and on it went. George kept telling Theodore what to say to Emily. And then Emily kept telling Theodore what to say to George. Theodore was tired of being the tug in the middle, and he decided to tell them so. Theodore, began George, but Theodore cut him off. George, I'm not taking any more messages to Emily, he said firmly. Good, replied George, smiling. Theodore was surprised. Then, happy. Great, he thought, maybe they're going to be friends again. But that wasn't what George had in mind at all. Theodore, George continued, I think you should spend less time with Emily. You don't want to pick up any of her bad habits. Bad habits? He asked. Yes, said George. Like being late all the time? But what about all her good habits? Asked Theodore. Oh, replied George. You can learn all the good things from me and still be on time. Then George suggested they practice together after work. Meet me near Willie's Island. And he sailed off. Theodore, said Emily. You really should spend less time with George. You don't want to pick up his bad habits. But what about all his good habits? Asked Theodore. Well, you can learn all that from me, replied Emily, and not be such a complainer. Then Emily suggested they practice together. Meet me at Willie's Island after work. And off she sailed. Well, Theodore felt terrible. He loved both Emily and George, and it hurt to see them angry with each other. Now Theodore loved George because he was always so eager to help any other ship in the harbor. And he loved Emily because she knew so much and was always teaching him new things. How could he choose one over the other? Which one? It hurt to be caught in the middle. He had no idea what to do. After work, George waited for Theodore at Willie's Island. He heard a tug approach. It must be Theodore, thought George. But instead, it was Emily. What are you doing here? They both said at once. I'm waiting for Theodore, said George. But he's late. George couldn't resist adding. He must have learned that from you. He was supposed to meet me, said Emily, but he must have seen you and decided not to come. Now George was upset too. Theodore is my friend. He loves to practice with me. He's my friend too, Emily replied, and he never complains when I'm a little late. George thought back to the morning meeting and how he had complained about Emily. He had been feeling tired and grumpy. Right now, he felt worried, worried about Theodore. I have been mean to Theodore, said George. Well, we've both been mean to Theodore, said Emily. And I feel terrible. But well, what can we do, said George. I have an idea, said Emily. But we'll need a little help. Come on. Theodore cruised back and forth near the sandy beach. He couldn't choose between his friends, and he was afraid he'd lose them both. He was very unhappy. It was a call from the dispatcher. Theodore, report to the harbor entrance at once to help two ships in need. Over. He was needed. I'm on my way, he shouted to the rocks and the water and the clouds. Here comes Theodore Tugboat. But when Theodore arrived at the harbor entrance, he couldn't see any ships at all. Where could they be, he wondered. Hello, Theodore, said Emily. Have you seen two ships in need? Asked Theodore anxiously. Yes, began George. We are the two ships in need. Well, Theodore looked puzzled. What did George mean? And, and why were George and Emily here together? We need to say that we're sorry, Theodore, said Emily. 
for asking you to choose between us. That wasn't fair, said George. Well, right away, Theodore felt so much better. I'm just glad you're talking to each other again, he said. We are, said George. We are, said Emily. Theodore's words had worked like magic. It seemed George and Emily's anger had left like a storm blown out to sea. I did a silly thing making an official complaint this morning, Emily, said George. I was tired and grumpy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, George, said Emily. It was silly for me to be late, so it was really all my fault. No, no, all my fault, said George. No, no, it was me, said Emily. Wait, wait, shouted Theodore. Emily and George fell silent. You both were very silly, okay, said Theodore. Right. Emily and George laughed together. And we're both very sorry, added George. So what are you going to do about it? asked Theodore. Now Emily and George looked confused. We don't know, they said. I do, said Theodore. The next morning, Theodore joined Emily to watch the sunrise. And Theodore made sure they left in time for the morning meeting. Time to go, Emily. I'm ready, said Emily. We don't want to be late. But first we have to stop by and wake George, said Theodore as they sailed on. Right, said Emily. He should be in a much better mood this morning, Theodore laughed. I made him promise to go to sleep early last night. Isn't it a beautiful morning, Emily, said Theodore. It certainly is, added Emily. It certainly is. <laughs>